Today's lesson is limitations of Arrhenius acid base concept. In this lesson, we are going to learn which are Arrhenius acids and which are Arrhenius bases and why. And then limitations of Arrhenius acid base concept. So uh, let's begin. The very first point is Arrhenius acids and bases. Let's see which compounds are Arrhenius acids and bases and why. Arrhenius acids are nitric acid, sulfuric acid, acetic acid, etc. And Arrhenius bases are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, etc. These compounds are acids. According to Arrhenius concept, the hydrogen containing compounds that can release hydrogen ion or proton in water are called Arrhenius acids. Simply Arrhenius acids can release protons in water and Arrhenius bases are the hydroxide compounds that can put away or release hydroxide ion in presence of water are called Arrhenius bases. Simply the hydroxide compounds that can produce hydroxide ions in water are called Arrhenius bases. So according to Arrhenius acid base concept, acids donate protons in presence of water and bases release hydroxide ion in presence of water. So in Arrhenius acid base concept, water is a very important matter here. Let's see the next point. Now the point is limitations of Arrhenius acid base concept. First limitation is water. That means in absence of water, Arrhenius acids and bases cannot function as acids and bases. Let's see. Suppose Arrhenius acid is nitric acid, sulfuric acid, acetic acid. This acid cannot produce protons in absence of water. So the Arrhenius acids cannot function as acids in absence of water. So water is very essential compound in case of Arrhenius acids. Similarly, in case of Arrhenius bases like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide the compounds though these compounds contain hydroxide but in absence of water these compounds cannot produce hydroxide ion in absence of water so water is very important compound here for Arrhenius acids and bases so this is the limitation that is without water Arrhenius acids and bases cannot function as acids and bases. Let's see the next point. Now the point is acids without hydrogen. That means there are some compounds can function as acids though there are no hydrogen atoms in that compounds. For example, we can write copper sulfate which is solid at normal condition 
when copper sulfate is dissolved in water then copper hydroxide and sulfuric acid are formed since sulfuric acid is a kind of strong acid but copper hydroxide is a weak base that is why the overall nature of the solution becomes acidic let's see the matter in detail copper hydroxide is a kind of weak base that is why a very low percent of copper hydroxide molecules ionize to copper ion and hydroxide ion suppose this is 5% molecules ionize then 10 hydroxide ions are formed and sulfuric acid is a kind of stronger acid that is why it dissociates 100% and these ions are formed hydrogen ion and sulfate ion if it dissociates 100% then 200 protons are formed now these 10 hydroxide ions 10 hydroxide ions combine with 10 protons and 10 water molecules are formed after 10 protons another 190 protons are left in the solution because of these 190 additional protons present in the solution the solution becomes acidic in nature so finally we can say that copper sulfate solution is a kind of acidic solution though there is no hydrogen atom in this compound so this is the limitation of Arrhenius concept let's see another compound now the compound is zinc sulfate which is solid at normal condition when zinc sulfate is dissolved in water then zinc hydroxide and sulfuric acid are formed zinc hydroxide is a kind of weak base but sulfuric acid is a kind of stronger acid that is why the nature of the solution becomes acidic in nature let's see another compound now the compound is ferrous sulfate which is solid at normal condition when ferrous sulfate is dissolved in water then ferrous hydroxide and sulfuric acid are formed ferrous hydroxide is a kind of weak base but sulfuric acid is a kind of strong acid for this reason the nature of the solution becomes acidic let's see another compound now the compound is aluminium chloride when this aluminium chloride is dissolved in water then aluminium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are formed hydrochloric acid is a kind of strong acid on the other hand aluminium hydroxide is a kind of weak base so the overall nature of the solution becomes acidic because of the presence of a strong acid hydrochloric acid this can be showed in different way let's see what is this process when aluminium chloride is dissolved in water then aluminium ion and chloride ion are formed this aluminium 3 plus combines with water molecule and this complex ion is formed six molecules of water with three plus charge this complex ion six molecules of water produce protons 
and this ion is formed aluminium five molecules of water and another hydroxide ion two plus charge so this is the another way aluminium chloride produces protons in water that is why the aluminium chloride acts as acid in presence of water though it has no hydrogen element so this is the limitation that is though there is no hydrogen element but act as acidic compound let's see the next point now the point is bases without OH group from the Arrhenius concept we know the hydroxide compounds the OH group containing compounds are Arrhenius bases now we will see the compounds that are bases but no OH group let's see the first compound that is sodium carbonate which is solid at normal condition when the sodium carbonate is dissolved in water then sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid are formed here we see that sodium hydroxide is a kind of strong base but carbonic acid is a kind of weak acid so overall the solution becomes basic in nature that means the limitation is sodium carbonate no OH group but acts as base in water let's see another compound now the compound is calcium oxide it's a kind of basic compound let's see when calcium oxide is dissolved in water then calcium hydroxide is formed calcium hydroxide is sparingly soluble in water or very poorly soluble in water calcium hydroxide in water it dissociates to calcium 2 plus and hydroxide ion so calcium oxide produces hydroxide ion in water considering this matter calcium oxide is a kind of weak base though it has no OH group let's say some more compounds now the compounds are ammonia then amines alkyl or aryl group connected with amino group and aniline these compounds are basic in nature though these compounds do not have OH group here this nitrogen contains one pair of electrons this one pair of electrons this nitrogen contains one pair of electrons because of this lone pair of electrons over nitrogen these compounds act as base these are especially Lewis base so these compounds do not support the Arrhenius concept this is the limitation of Arrhenius acid base concept let's see the next point now the point is acid without water and base without water from the Arrhenius concept we know acids are those compounds which can donate proton in water and base are those compounds which can donate hydroxide ion in water but here without water acid and without water base let's see the compounds hydrogen chloride which is gas that means no water is present here and ammonia which is gaseous in a state but when these two gases are mixed together then we get 
ammonium chloride salt so since it is a salt and we know salt is produced from acid and base so here this is acid and this is base that means this hydrogen chloride acts as acid in this reaction and ammonia gas acts as base in this reaction so this is acid without water this is base without water so Arrhenius concept is destroyed here these are the limitations of Arrhenius acid base concept no more today thank you very much take care